Have Harry and Meghan's star power finally dimmed? Their recent tour of Colombia, which was supposed to be a shining example of their global appeal, instead turned into a spectacle of awkwardness and glaringly empty seats. How did the Duke and Duchess of Sussex go from being the most talked-about couple in the world to struggling to fill venues on a high-profile international tour? Today, we'll delve into the details of this disastrous tour, exploring the missteps, the embarrassments, and what this means for their future in the global spotlight. From the underwhelming turnout to the bizarre overuse of security, we'll examine whether this tour is a sign that Harry and Meghan's glory days are truly behind them. Harry and Meghan's Colombian tour was intended to be a testament to their enduring influence and global reach. After stepping back from their royal duties, the couple has embarked on a mission to redefine their roles on the world stage. This tour, particularly in partnership with the office of the Vice President of Colombia, was supposed to be a significant step in that direction. However, instead of being a resounding success, it has become a glaring example of how the couple's relevance might be waning. The tour was meant to be a platform for them to address important issues, but instead, it became a story of empty seats, misjudged speeches, and an overwhelming sense of awkwardness. The stage was set for Harry and Meghan to shine in Colombia. They were scheduled to speak at the Responsible Digital Future Summit, an event that would align perfectly with their advocacy work on online safety and digital responsibility. Hosted by the Archwell Foundation in partnership with the Office of the Vice President of Colombia, this summit was expected to draw significant attention and a large audience. Meghan was to deliver a keynote address on the dangers of online trolling and the importance of instilling values taught by older generations in the digital age. On paper, the event had all the makings of a grand affair that would showcase their global appeal and commitment to social causes. Yet, what unfolded was anything but grand. The reality of the situation became painfully clear on the first day of the tour. Meghan's speech on online safety, which was meant to be a highlight of the summit, was delivered to a shockingly sparse audience. Despite the importance of the topic, the turnout was dismal, with empty seats far outnumbering the attendees. The awkwardness of the situation was palpable, as Meghan's noble message about online kindness seemed to fall on deaf ears, not because people weren't interested, but because there were so few people there to hear it. The situation was further exacerbated by Meghan's struggles with the Spanish language. Speaking in a Spanish-speaking country, one would expect a certain level of fluency or at least competence. However, Meghan's attempt at speaking Spanish left much to be desired, adding to the overall sense of unpreparedness and disconnect from the local audience. Those who did attend were left wondering why they had bothered, as the empty chairs around them spoke volumes about the couple's fading appeal. As the tour progressed, the situation did not improve. Despite the underwhelming start, there was no significant effort to boost attendance at subsequent events. Rumors swirled that the couple might have resorted to hiring crowds, a tactic allegedly used during their Nigeria tour, but even if this were the case, it didn't help in Colombia. The venues remained embarrassingly empty, and the few people who did attend were subjected to events that were more lackluster than inspiring. One event, in particular, stood out for its sheer absurdity. Held at a location with minimal seating, perhaps to disguise the anticipated low turnout, the idea that people would willingly sit under the blazing Colombian sun just to hear Harry and Meghan speak seemed almost laughable. Unsurprisingly, the crowd was sparse, and the event turned into yet another flop. Adding to the list of embarrassments were some personal mishaps. Meghan was spotted with sweat stains, a trivial detail but one that the press eagerly pounced on. Meanwhile, Harry's thinning hair became harder to ignore, further contributing to the image of a couple whose best days are behind them. The stark contrast between their current reality and their once glamorous lifestyle was becoming more and more apparent with each passing day. Perhaps the most puzzling aspect of the entire tour was the level of security that accompanied them. Despite the lack of crowds, over 3,000 security personnel, including military forces, were reportedly on hand. The sight of heavily armed guards protecting empty venues was almost poetic, a perfect metaphor for the futility of the entire endeavor. The extreme measures seemed out of place, raising questions about why such a high level of security was necessary when there was no one around to protect them from. In the end, Harry and Meghan's Colombian tour has achieved one thing, it has firmly cemented their status as figures of fading relevance. 
what was meant to be a showcase of their global influence, has instead highlighted just how far they have fallen from their once lofty position. Their attempts to cling to the spotlight have only served to underscore their diminishing appeal. As they continue to navigate their new roles outside the royal family, this tour might be a harsh reminder that public interest in them is waning. Whether they can regain the public's attention and rebuild their image remains to be seen, but for now, it seems that the spotlight is dimming on the Duke and Duchess of Sussex.